So I am yet to decide whether this video has been bought on me turning into a crazy cat lady, me going absolutely insane in lockdown, or me having a fine art degree, or whether it's a combination of all of those things together. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing something a little bit different and I think I've gone a bit mad, but earlier this year my partner and I acquired this little floof uh, and his name is Banshee. I will put some video footage of him in closer up and I decided tis the season to be spooky and that I was going to make my cat a Halloween costume um, because I do not have a child and I am not doing any Anything. so you get to enjoy that so there are a few things that have inspired this and he's off now I will quickly show you him before we go hello you want to say hello to the people so this is Batchy he's seven months old he's got two different colored eyes and he's very very tolerant of my nonsense so I think that this is going to be quite a good thank you this is going to be quite a good candidate for a cat Halloween costume he's going to get lots of treats but as I was saying <laughs> this has been inspired by a few different things now the first is by an artist who I have looked at quite a lot on TikTok who's very death positive and I've forgotten her tag but I will pop a video here over this side uh, and link her down below but she made a moth costume for herself Secondly, it was inspired by Rachel Maxey, who is another YouTuber who does a lot of kind of crafty sewing things. Uh, and she's made a couple of costumes for her dog, Frodo. Um, I'll link that here. It's also been inspired by the fact that I do a lot of artwork in my kind of fine art stuff that's related to insects and moths. And also because he is white. So what I've decided to do is turn my cat into an ermine moth. And they are moths that have have big white wings that are spotty and big ruffs around their necks and they are named after the ermine uh, fabric not fabric fur uh, that came from I think Stokes but I will double check that so I am going to make him a set of ermine wings that I can attach to his harness uh, and I'm going to take you through the process that I did to do that so let's get making uh, I will start with materials and then we'll see how we go So in what I thought was sufficiently well-planned blue pea to style you, I've actually made one of the wings already. Uh, I did this yesterday to make sure that it didn't go horribly wrong. So we're going to pop that to the side and I'm going to show you how I uh, put that together so that we can then put the whole piece together. So I've gathered a few random bits from around the house. Um, so you may well have some of these, you may well not, but the first thing I did was get this, which is actually, we haven't had it for a while, you can <laughs> see a little foot there, um, of the person that's going to be wearing this lovely costume. Um, but this is from uh, HelloFresh, it's what they use to keep the meat insulated, but it's pretty much just wadding, so I thought that would be good for the uh, underlayer. Then I have a few other bits and pieces. So this is just some plain cotton. I didn't bother ironing it because it gets stretched out anyway. So we'll go with that. Yes, sir, you are involved here. So we've got that. We then have some white and some gray embroidery, silk, a few different needles. I use ones that have really big eyes because uh, I wanted to use quite thick uh, amounts of fabric. We have fabric scissors and our little embroidery scissors as well. A couple of different Posca pens, one I used as a marker to color in uh, the fabric and one which I used to make my template. And then I've also got some pastels here, just plain kind of chalk pastels, which I used as a basis to add a little bit of depth to the color of the uh, fabric. So we are going to get started with our second ring, which will hopefully match this one, and we can make our little moth costume for Banshee.
This bit I didn't massively think about uh, when I was doing it, but I'm going to now cut around my first wing here to get a matching uh, piece for the other side and we can of course just flip it over. So I'm just gonna cut that out and then I'll show you how I shaved it down so that it's a little bit more flat and not quite as bulky uh, as this material here. Okay, so you'll have to bear with me because I am totally, get ready for a pun, winging <laughs> this here. But what I then did to give this a little bit more shape because this is very kind of rectangular and I'll zoom you in for this, but I just took the big fabric scissors and I trimmed off the edges like I'm doing here just to give it a bit of a bevel, which I found made it a little bit less. That's not for you. <laughs> not for you, that made it a little bit less spiky. And that just gave the wing a little bit of a better shape so that it just kind of wasn't quite as blocky. So I'm gonna round off these edges and try not to cut your whiskers off. <laughs> So as you can see, that first trim has kind of rounded off those edges uh, really, really roughly. Uh, but what I'm gonna do now is take my scissors and really kind of round that out. So it goes to an almost point on the edge and we've got a nice smooth round edge. Are you having fun in Big Box? Oh, exciting times in Big Box. Why do you look so confused? Now I think I've got two wings that pretty much match. You can see here that I've sort of smoothed off those edges. So rather than being really harsh and rough, they're a little bit more even. Banshee's just moved <laughs> and it's knocking the tripod over. But I've done that as kind of evenly as I will think it will work with. And hopefully now I'll get a bit more of a tapered edge. I'm sure you could do exactly the same thing uh, with something like wadding. <clears throat> But what I'm going to do now is use this as my template to cut out my fabric. So the way that I did this for the first wing was to grab my big bit of cotton here and let me just floof it out. But I folded that over so that I had a strip to work with and folded that in half so that I ended up with two pieces. So I'm just going to cut this bit off here. I'm sure there are probably people who work with fabric a lot that are screaming at the way I'm doing this, but it's all a learning curve. And remember, I am making a costume for a cat. So <laughs> it doesn't need to be the most perfect thing in the world. So what I'm gonna do now is fold this in half so that I can cut two bits in one, lay this onto my piece of fabric. And then what I will do is conserve the rest of this fabric here so that I'm not wasting it for another project that I'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks. And what I'm going to do is just grab a pencil and sketch a seam allowance. I'm giving myself quite a lot of room here. I did on the other one uh, about an inch or kind of three-ish centimeters. And this is gonna go all the way around the edge really, really loosely. And then I'm gonna cut that out and I'm gonna hand stitch that together uh, cause I don't actually have a sewing machine, but I'm sure a sewing machine would do a much better and a much quicker job. So let's get that cut out and then we can start sewing. Okay, so what I've got now is my two bits of fabric, which I'm gonna sew wrong sides together and then turn them inside out. I've just drawn the template of the wing on this side and I am just gonna do a really simple running stitch. I found that worked nice and easily on the back side. And I'm going to use the whole thickness of uh, this embroidery floss just to make sure it's nice and sturdy as well so I'm not going to film that because that's probably going to be the most boring thing ever I'm going to sit down with my cup of tea and get sewing on that part and then we should have a little pouch which we can slot our little pad in we have wing number two so you can see I have just really simply running stitched around the outside of everything now so what I'm going to do is trim off the extra and while I'm doing that I'm going to talk about a show that I've been watching recently which is called The Chestnut Man um, and it's on Netflix it's a 
like Scandi Noir, uh, police procedural um, kind of thing. Normally, like The Killing, if you've seen that kind of thing, um, or The Bridge, very similar. And I've been watching it with subtitles and it's really good and especially suitable for spooky season. So if you like kind of murder, mystery, Scandi Noir stuff, I'd highly recommend that. <laughs> but now we have our extra cut off. I'm going to leave this bit here and that is going to kind of help seal everything up and this is going into my stuffing pile for stuffing things later. And now what I'm going to do is flip this inside out so you can't see any of the stitching. And now I'm going to feed my bit of stuffing in. So let's go. Okay, so now I've got the stuffing in, I'm looking at them and they're not perfectly shaped, but what I noticed with this one is as I started sewing, it's created these kind of channels of the stuffing as it's been compressed down. So I'm hoping that this is gonna kind of push that out a little bit. And if not, it's my first ever time making a cat costume. So, you know, I don't think he'll mind, and I certainly don't mind, so we'll get going with that. But what I've done is I've added my stuffing in now. You can see it's nice and plump. And this is the side that I want to work on. I'm actually gonna leave this part open rather than this one. This is just glue gun, so I can really easily unpick it but I think it's going to be easier to attach the way I think I'm going to attach it um, by having this bit open. So the next thing I did when I was making this first one was grabbed my phone <laughs> and I got myself my reference image of the ermine uh, moth. So I'm going to put that on screen nice and big so that you can see it but I'm just going to grab up that image and this is the one that I use like I say I'll pop it on screen but while I was working I just sketched out where I wanted all the spots and the patterns to be uh, with a pencil because I'm going to be going over it with the pastels in a moment to give it a little bit of depth and then I'll add my spots as well. So I feel like my filming quality is gonna go down massively now because it's 3 p.m. in the UK in October. It's practically dark and it's absolutely pouring it down with rain. So any footage from now on, if you see it and it looks a bit gloomy, this is why. Now I've got my two wings and it has gone super dark. I am going to add a little bit of tone and texture. So with this one, what I did was used a pastel or a couple of pastels to add a little bit of shadow um, along the lines that the kind of veins along the wings are and at the top, just to give it a bit of kind of color, a bit of dimension before I, hello, are you coming to see your costume? Um, a little bit of color and dimension before I then sewed on the veins to give it a bit of extra texture, uh, just because I think that's gonna make it a little bit more visually interesting. So let's get that done on this one. I'm gonna zoom you in for that so you can see it um, in a little bit more detail tail and then we're nearly done with both of our wings. <laughs> this is the one time that I've not got nice nails that I really wish I did because you're super close up. <laughs> noticed as I was adding the extra embroidery to this one is it did rub off quite a lot of the uh, dimension that I added so <laughs> this one here looks a lot grayer a lot blacker than this one did um, but I did notice that that did kind of peter off as I sewed it together so what I'm going to do now is the last element of the wings on this one which is those little kind of embroidery lines that go all along the veins of the wing which are pinching it in this is what it looks like on the back I could do a fly <laughs> on the back and I did that with a running stitch so I used the same needle I did for the first one but I used a light grey embroidery silk for this one instead uh, and this took quite a long time <laughs> so what I am going to do is again I'm going to sit down with another episode of the chestnut man um, and I am going to begin embroidering this but again I am going to show you how I did it first thank you for the pour um, I am going to show you how I did it first just so you can see if you wanted to recreate something similar yourself we 
you now have wings, but that also means we have rapidly approached the point in the video where I have not planned or checked this is gonna work like I did with the wings. So we're winging it again, hilarious fun, from here on out. What I'm thinking is to create the kind of fur ruff that goes around the ermine moth. I picked up this felt, which I'm hoping I can cut a base shape out of. And I have some roving, which is unfelted felt, um, and a felting pad, which I will show you nice and close up, and some felting needles, which are from my previous video, which I'll pop up here about testing uh, felting kits. So my plan is, is to draw a template out of this, use this to create the floof, because I'm thinking if it's felted, it's probably going to stick on a little bit more sturdily than if I were to glue gun it so that Banshee cannot tear out all of the felt. So we will get started on that and then we've just got to attach it to his harness. He is over there at uh, Melemi. <laughs> attach to his harness and then we are good to go. Now I've got my piece here. I think this is going to sit about here, maybe a little bit higher to then attach to the harness. And I can attach this section here to the harness. So what I'm gonna do is just mark off where I want that kind of harness section to be. So along this kind of edge. Yeah. I might end up cutting that part off. I'm not sure yet because he's kind of the moth, so who knows. But now what I'm gonna do is take my felting pad. Again, I will uh, I would highly recommend watching the other video if you're not sure about felting. But what I'm going to do is lay this on and then attach the felt to this strip. So I've got a big bunch of white roving here and I want the bottom to be quite fluffy still. So what I've done is taken sections of this roving by kind of loosely pulling at it like that. And then I'm gonna fold them in half, attach them to this section here, and I'm gonna felt this section, but I'm gonna leave this part loose uh, to hopefully give that kind of fluffy outline, which I can then trim um, if I need to later on so that it matches our moth. So I'm gonna bring you in, and we will do a bit of a time-lapse of starting that. So I think I've finished felting his little collar ruff now. I ended up going back in and felting a layer underneath onto the felt that was there, just because I think when these parts move, you might be able to see them. So I think having that felting underneath just made it a little bit more authentic. And we've got the longer bits and the shorter bits. And I have also unpicked the glue from the original wing. So what I'm going to do is use a glue gun, which I've got warming up just over there somewhere and I'm going to attach that to these parts here and then we will get it attached to his harness. I can't quite decide whether I'm going to go with them like this or whether I'm going to overlap them slightly where this one is a bit bigger but I think I'm going to do them individually uh, just because I think you're going to get a bit better movement that way and I don't think that looks too too bad. This is the harness that I want to use. It's just a plain kind of standard harness where his lead clips there. This bit acts like a collar and goes around his neck and then this bit goes around his tummy. So I'm thinking of adding it to this neck section. And I've got some Velcro here that I can add that I want to use just so it's nice and easy to take off if need be. I'm sure he's not gonna freak out about it because he's pretty good with almost absolutely everything. Um, but I just want to make sure that I've got that kind of quick removal just in case. So I'm going to take the felt here and I want some fairly kind of wide strips and I'm just going to cut them out like that and wrap them around to see uh, how I can attach them. And this is sticky back uh, Velcro so I can just stick that on and go from there.
So overall, I'm super, super happy um, with how this turned out. I like it way more than I thought I would. <laughs> I'm way more pleased with it than I thought I would be. I love this kind of fairy rough bit and how it sort of blends in with his fur and that the wings are a little bit padded. I ended up doing two straps on the back of the harness just because they were kind of sliding off a bit. So we've just got two little bits of Velcro that act as a strap on the harness that can then clip round. And overall, I'm super, super pleased with this and I'm kind of tempted to make myself one as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I I hope that inspired you to go and make your own Halloween costume or your own animal Halloween costume. Please do like and comment on this video if you enjoyed it. Follow me on all the social medias. I'm at Deburia everywhere and I will see you guys next time for another video. Bye everyone! Come to say hello tripod kitten. Are you helping? Are you helping with your costume? So again, my needle is threaded with a small tail and a cat trying to catch the end uh, and a little knot at the end here. I don't know why we're not focusing today. This camera is not having it today. I especially enjoy how this bit here almost looks like a little creepy jack-o'-lantern skeleton face, but we have wings.